Welcome to Learning with Philemon. In this video, we will be looking at molecular orbitals, as well as sigma and pi bonding. In the orbitals video, we discussed that orbitals can be described by a mathematical wave function that gives the probability of finding an electron in a particular point in space. This is because electrons exhibit particle-like, but also wave-like properties. When two waves meet, there can be constructive, or destructive interference. For more on this effect studied in the physics course, check out the link in the description. When atomic orbitals meet, when two atoms are bonding, a similar effect is seen. Let's look at the example of hydrogen. Each hydrogen atom has one electron in the 1s atomic orbital. When two hydrogen atoms bond to form hydrogen, H2, the two 1s atomic orbitals must interact. If there is constructive interference, a new bonding molecular orbital, sigma, is formed, where there is a high probability of finding the electrons between the two nuclei, denoted by the black dots. Remember that in a covalent bond, electrons are shared between two nuclei. This molecular orbital is lower in energy than the atomic orbitals. On the other hand, if there is destructive interference, an anti-bonding molecular orbital sigma asterisk is formed with no probability of finding electrons between the two nuclei. This molecular orbital is at a higher energy than the atomic orbitals. When two hydrogen atoms bond, their electrons occupy the bonding molecular orbital. Remember that atoms bond to achieve a more energetically stable configuration. It would not be energetically favorable for the electrons to occupy the anti-bonding orbital. These diagrams get more complicated when there are more atomic orbitals occupied with electrons. Check the link in the description for more. Let's now look at how other atomic orbitals can combine. Sigma bonding is when atomic orbitals overlap along the internuclear axis. In the previous slide, we saw that two s orbitals can combine along the internuclear axis the axis through the two nuclei, denoted by the dotted line, to form a molecular orbital. Similarly, an s and a px orbital, or two px orbitals, can combine in this manner to form sigma molecular orbitals. Note that px orbitals lie along the internuclear axis. All single covalent bonds are actually sigma bonds. This idea will be further explored in the next video on hybridization. However, atomic orbitals can combine in a different way as well. Pi bonding is when atomic orbitals combine sideways on to form a molecular orbital with electron density above and below the internuclear axis. Py and Pz orbitals are perpendicular to the internuclear axis. When two Py orbitals overlap, for example, we get the following pi molecular orbital. Note that the electrons can be above or below the internuclear axis, but not on the internuclear axis. All double and triple bonds are pi bonds. This idea will be further explored in the next video on hybridization. The formation of pi bonds allows for the delocalization of electrons across part or all of a molecule. For example, in benzene, C6H6, discussed in the previous video resonance, the p orbitals from each carbon atom, perpendicular to the ring, overlap forming a molecular orbital with electron density below and above the ring. The six electrons originally occupying the atomic orbitals can now move across the whole ring in this molecular orbital. The overlap of p orbitals allows for the delocalization of electrons in other molecules where resonance is possible. To reinforce your understanding of all these intertwined concepts, I would recommend you visit the links in the description and watch the orbitals, resonance, and hybridization videos. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already, please subscribe for more content. Stay curious.